Hello, I'm Bill Harris, and welcome to Life Questions, a program that provides answers to life's questions from a biblical perspective. Many of the questions we discuss are sent in by viewers just like you, serious questions from people who are in pursuit of truth. Later on, we're going to be telling you how you can contact us with your questions. And by the way, we wish to thank you for the enormous response with a good flood of questions for our experts to answer. So let's get right to it. Let's meet our clergy panel. First up, we have Pastor Ray Hadley of the Ada Family Center in Ada, Ohio, followed by Pastor Jerry Meyer of Breakthrough Harvest in Ottawa, Ohio. Next is Pastor Mark Bailiff of the Union Chapel Missionary Church in Lima. And rounding up our panel is Pastor Matt Steiner of Pandora Missionary Church in Pandora, <coughs> Ohio. Gentlemen, we welcome you to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, to get into the discussion, you know, we are in the throes of the 2020 November election campaign. And it's in high gear already. It is. It's in high gear already. Yeah. Which brings to mind, when we talk about stuff from a biblical perspective, should we as ministers be getting political? Should we come down on one side of the political aisle as opposed to the other? How sayest thou, gentlemen? <laughs> Y'all look at me. Anybody want uh, this? Yeah, Jerry, why don't you just No. Um, you know, I think there's a fine line to talk about here. Yeah. Um, you know, we wouldn't allow commerce in the sanctuary. Most of us wouldn't uh, try to sell things uh, from the pulpit. Or um, I, I remember the, an old fad where you used to have the uh, phone company cards on the pews and things like that to try to raise money for the church. And we just moved away from those things because it was, it was bringing commerce into the house of God. I think sometimes we allow politics too much to infiltrate the church. But yeah. as a Christian, I think we have a, a, a responsibility. Sure we do. And, to and, and, to and, do what now specifically? To, to, to be engaged in the political process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, I, and Too many people have fought and died for the rights that we right. have and uh -huh. we enjoy, and okay. especially the right to vote. Um, so, so I think that you have to. Now, in our church, I, we have a rule: we don't we don't allow politicians to speak from our pulpit. We we want preachers and ministers of the gospel. We're not there for a political convention or party. We're there for uh, the the preaching of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we don't we don't allow those things from the pulpit. Um, yet, in, and, and I don't get political when I preach. I try not to, but you know, so many of the issues of life purvey yeah. into the preaching of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so it's not about being political from the pulpit. Um, it, it, it's about teaching the, 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 the doctrines of Christ. Well, mm -hmm. how do you deal with the situation? Let's take abortion, a very, very hot issue. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I would venture to say that we ministers around this table would consider that a deeply spiritual issue. Absolutely. Yes. It has been made political. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yes, How true. can you speak to this issue without appearing to making it political? I don't try to keep it from being a political issue, Bill. Uh, I speak openly about that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a pro-life church. And uh, my big battle cry is, what about the baby? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, regardless of how else you frame that issue, and, and we are living, see, I, I graduated from high school in 72, abortion became legal in 73. Right. We told jokes about abortion. We had no idea what abortion was. And, and the Supreme Court of 73, I, I firmly believe they had no clue that we'd be at about 60 million infants murdered. Wow. They, they mm -hmm. couldn't have foreseen that. And so based on what are happening in states right now, we have an opportunity to do something that, that up until maybe five years ago wouldn't even been thought of. And what you're speaking of, of course, <coughs> is the fact that it's becoming such an issue now. Right. And, and uh, with a lot of states falling in line that are right. coming up with anti-abortion laws. Yes. We could very well wind up in the Supreme Court again. Yes. yes. With another case right. where the predominantly conservative Supreme Court could overthrow yes. uh, uh, Roe versus Wade. Yes, I'm absolutely convinced that's what God's up to. Mm -hmm. I really am. And I... Uh, I speak clearly, and just going back, I told our folks from the pulpit, I'm voting for Donald Trump. I told them that. I said, not because I think he's the greatest thing since ice cream, but because he's going to appoint at least two Supreme Court judges. Yeah. And I, I don't back down from that. But like Jerry, we don't have uh, county or state uh, you know, politicians come and share. We're just not comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. But I, th I think all bets are off. 
How, how do you do, do it in a situation where if one party is in power, the other party might say uh, what they're doing is ungodly, but then if the other power that they are part of comes in power, then there's nothing said with these things that are done ungodly. I, am I making any sense at all? Yeah. And, and if there's silence when one, if there's silence from evangelicals and from the clergy, right. when one party is in power and there are sinful things happening, and right. then if the other party gets in power, right. then there's the hue and cry for impeachment and the like. Um, you know, I, I believe Elder, there is that God gives us uh, discernment and know when to speak and when not to speak. Yeah, and, that's right. Yeah. Uh, also, when it comes to um, should we say things or not, is there a balance that we need to follow? And we can get too political, but then we can try to hide under a rock too. Mm -hmm. And I think that the balance means that if somebody comes up and asks me what, um, what I believe on certain issues, then I'm going to tell them what the Bible says and how I feel. Um, but I'm not going to stand up and say, you know, this party or this party, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them a voter guide and say, hey, this is what people have researched. This is what people stand for. Right. And then, you know, it, the, praying that they do make the right decision. But, yeah. you know, if we give the people the information, then we allow the Holy Spirit to convict them. Yes. And then they will guide them in the process of, of making a decision to vote. What I'm trying to determine is, does one political party have the corner on God? Mm. Wow. Well, you would think so based on how, how the Christian right responds <laughs> that's, that's, that's to Republicans. That's what but I'm saying. Does one party have no, the, the quarter no, on God? No, I don't believe no. they do. No. You don't? Do you believe? I, d I don't believe so either. And, and this is either both. Well, you tie it in two difficult questions. And the yeah, one, that's, they, that's, that was it, great, it Bill. And, but people it's, are struggling with that. It is. And it, it, is, it is something that we don't um, shy away from. It's, you know abortion, political, I mean, it's just, you, you can't turn on the news without seeing right. something. And mm -hmm. and how do we, what is the response of the church? What is the response of, of Christians? And, you know, I think of, you know, going back to God's word, it, it says very clearly that we're supposed to respect all authority. And I think that's mm -hmm. where going away from respecting who, no matter who's in office or who's yes. running is respecting them. And it's kind of hard to respect yeah. politicians and at times. To pray for them. <laughs> pray, pray, for yeah, pray, two, pray, one pray, four. pray, pray for the authority. Those and, in authority, exactly. And, you know, I, what gives me, because I'm, I'm, I'm pro-life, I'm, you know, it's, but what gives me peace. What if our, the one is that's in authority, uh, one who is in authority happens to be gay? And the Christians are to pray for those who are in authority. Do you see, are we, are, we, are we getting close to where there's going to be a quagmire situation for us? It's still uh, a matter of, uh, in my mind, Romans 12, we, we are to pray for those in authority. Right. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. word authority means to have jurisdiction over, the right to govern. Mm -hmm. And so by doing that, whether a person's gay or atheist or whatever they might be, or Christian, yeah. that we have a responsibility to be influencers as ambassadors for Christ. Right. And we are required to do that. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying I like it, yeah. But, yeah. but I'm required to be obedient to that. And I don't know about the word activist. That, that's such a big, all-encompassing word. But I think about the Christians in, in the early church under Rome's uh, mm -hmm. influence. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and their primary source of power was their persecution and their godliness. And so for us to think we can usher in the kingdom if we could all just be good Republicans, what a wonderful thought. It's just not reality, <laughs> nor is it biblical. Right. right. It's just right. not biblical. Yeah. 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 Well, and I, silence is consent. Yes, if it, we is. Don't, it is. If we don't voice the word of God, and, right. and, and my job in as a, a pastor, mm -hmm. my job as a pastor is not to promote a politician or a party. Right. My job is to lift up the name of Christ. Exactly. Yeah. And so, is it, a ba is it a balance? Is it a fine line? Absolutely. Right. But it does not. Uh, I don't want to say it doesn't. It doesn't disable me from having an opinion or right. having a, right. a a slant and a viewpoint or anything else. And I need to vote my conscience. I need to vote right. my heart. Right. But as far as me trying to compel or 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 push someone else to vote this way or that way or see things my way, right. I, th when we preach the gospel, we preach His word, not ours. That's right. We mm -hmm. preach His uh, uh, standards, not ours. And and but when it becomes our standard. That's when it becomes legalistic. That's when it becomes yeah, an, yeah. an enforcement of our view yeah, and not yeah, the word. Right. 
I, I think to just, I know on this, some of you are kind of hanging along on this, but this is a great question. But I look at, you know, First Peter 2, when you talk about the Roman government, I mean, Nero, I believe, was the, the ruler at that time. And he was, we think we have it bad. Right. I mean, they had it. People were being burnt at the stake. <coughs> stake. I mean, just things of that nature. But what it says in, in 1 Peter 2, verse 13, for the Lord's sake, respect all human authority. That's right. Whether the king as head of state, the officials he has appointed. So, I mean, it's, it's saying for the Lord's sake. And that's what we have to focus on is it's for the Lord's. And he's right. sovereign. He's king over all. Right. God could put a monkey. He could put a 10-year-old as president. I mean, he could do whatever he wants. He's in, he's in control, and we have to understand that no matter what happens in this right. world, right. he's still sovereign. I think that's where we need to focus on. Let me go back to gay rights for a moment. We believe that the Bible speaks against homosexuality. We believe there's plenty of scripture that proves that. How do we speak out against that without appearing to be bigoted hmm. and hateful right. and, and, and not loving people? How do, how do we? How do, we, how do we do that yeah. balance? I, I think that you, if we just stand on the corner with our signs and uh, quote scripture, then I don't, I don't think that's going to be effective in any way other than driving them away. But if we, get, if we actually sit down and take time to, to hear their story, share their life, uh, understand them more, then, then we earn the right to start to, with, with the Holy Spirit's discernment yeah. and giving us words, start to speak life into them. Mm -hmm. It's all about the relationship again. Isn't it? And, Isn't and it's, it? The declaration of the word has power, of course, and the anointing. But to just say, well, here's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to meet, no matter what the issue is, but homosexuality and gay marriage is certainly on that radar. Mm -hmm. it is to not just say, well, that's wrong because we say it is. Right. But look at the God of the universe who created things in a certain manner. And if we want to live in a way that's pleasing to him, then we love people enough to tell them the truth. We also love them enough to listen to them right. and understand them instead of just saying this. And, and the church has not done very good with that, right. to be fair. Yeah. We haven't. And it what is. I've observed, too, is that when uh, this country is being divided. Yeah. The country is right. being divided. Sure it is. And um, there is enough sin on both sides yep. of the political aisle yes. to go around. <laughs> Do, yeah. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. On, on of the course. Yes. And a matter of saying that, well, somebody said it a moment ago, being silent when right. some things are going on that you don't like. But right. we even have proof that in some cases, politicians have been vocal right. when the opposite party right. was in power about right. things that were going wrong. Right. But now when their party is in power and these right. same things are going wrong, there is this silence, which as you said, is, yeah. is, consent. is consent. consent. Sure. And it's confusing it's confusing the great unwashed. Yes. It's confusing the world. Yeah. And I, I, how do we go right ahead? How do we deal with it? I was just going to say, you know, um, Jesus tells us to, to <clears throat> follow him as our example. And he was the only one that can perfectly show grace and truth. Right. That's right. Grace and and we have to have both. Amen. And what did Jesus do? He ate and drank with mm -hmm. the tax collectors or prostitutes. I mean, he got into he their did, mess. Right. Yeah. And he got to build a relationship with them and learn right. who they were and teach. Mm -hmm. And that grace and truth, that is such a, mm -hmm. a balancing act as yeah. a pastor, as a Christian. How, how do you, and, and, and Jesus in is that, the model. he never compromised who he was. Right. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. exactly. He, he and that amazing. to them yeah. in a love they hadn't recognized out, right. of, out of religion. Right. And, That's true. And, and that, that in itself, um, you know, we, we, you hear the phrase today, you, you hate the sin, but you love the sinner. There you go. And, and, and how, you know, there are a lot of churches, I think, would, would turn an a upturned nose towards, you know, somebody that walked in looking a, a specific way. And yet we are commanded to reach out, go into all the world and right. preach right. the gospel, not our political sl sway, not our understanding of things, but to preach the gospel to every creature. That's where the power right. is. Yeah. Bill, one short Good thought, uh -huh. and I think our audience knows this, uh, and all true believers know it, but it's easy to forget that just because something is legal does not necessarily yeah, mean good. that it's moral. That's right. And so abortion is legal, but the murdering of 60 million babies since 1973, no one in their right mind would say that that is moral. 
And so you can look at same-sex marriage or a hundred other things. And just because the state says it's legal does not necessarily mean it's righteous. Yeah. You know, we got to take a break, but I think we need to come back to the same issue when we come yep. back after the break. You all agree? We'll I agree. Deal with sure. this a little bit Absolutely. More. Stay yep. with us. We'll be right back. More fireworks to come. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back now. We want to dig a little deeper in this thing about politics in the church. Mm -hmm. As Christians, we want to make sure that we don't confuse the world with our behavior. And if we say, for instance, that we are against killing the baby in the womb, hmm. then should we not also be willing to speak up and protect those children who are born yes. and living in the immigration camps, some in... Uh, some in cages and the like. At least five of those children have died. We have to be consistent, consistent on, on both yes. sides of that. If we say that we promote love and the like, doesn't that mean love for all rather than being divisive in, in, in our love? I mean, look at the race problem in this country now, uh, what it's come to be. The world is looking at all of this. Yes. They see our inconsistency, and if we don't get it together, Right. Will our message have the same potency? You know, how do you deal with all that? Hmm. You all afraid it's to answer that to, one? <laughs> It's hard to improve on what you just said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really. Uh, consistency, our culture is looking for consistency and authentic authenticity. They're looking for us to be honest. And when we fail and we don't get it right, to be able to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And the whole southern border thing is a relatively new mm -hmm. situation as mm -hmm. far as the number mm -hmm. of children. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you said certainly would speak my heart as well, Bill. Okay. You know, in James uh, chapter 1, verse 8 says, A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Yep. Yeah, um, how unstable do we look? Right. As, a, as not just as a nation, but as the church. Right. When we fumble around these things or act like we don't want to talk about them, right. but we need to teach the balance of the word and we need to teach the power of right. the word right. in every po portion of our life, how it applies, um, how, how you can put it to practical use um, when it comes to politics or when it comes to any other thing, whether it, it be uh, whatever prevalent issue of the day. Right. Um, if, if the word works, then why don't we stand on it? Right. And not just right. when it's convenient right. or when it suits public popular opinion, mm -hmm. right. but That's good. will we stand on it in every situation right. and across every, because would we have problems with race or with um, you know rich against poor or this against that. We've drawn every possible line to divide, but truth of the matter is the old uh, Julius Caesar is divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. Jesus said it this way, that the house divided against itself cannot yes, stand. Right. So uh, what are we the church doing right. Right. to bring unity, to bring a restoration back into not just the house of God, but into our right. nation? Right. Yeah. You know, and if we're not if we're not projecting that consistency mm -hmm. in the Word of God, then what does what does the world see? They see hypocriticalness. They see uh, 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 a stumbling, fumbling Charlie Chaplin Church. You know, the Keystone Cop Church that yeah. that just never advances. Right. And then we wonder why the churches are drying out and dying. Right. But the enemy is smart. I think he's he's trying to uh, get us divided because he knows the more we split and the mm. more we divide and the more uh, we are pulled apart from each other, the weaker we become. Right. And not only that, Pastor, but you know, uh, the, the enemy also knows that a part of that divide is in the fact that if we don't come together, eventually persecution yeah. against Christians is going to force us together. Yeah. 
it, it, persecution is out there in the world, in, yes. in other corners of the world. Right. It's coming to the United States. Sure, yeah. And when it hits these shores, it won't ask you whether you are, are um, um, Baptist okay. or Methodist, you know, what your affiliation is there. Right. If, if you name the name of Jesus Christ, you're it. You're right. Right. That's yeah, the way persecution right. will. Uh, right. my, my old bishop used to say that all the time, is that persecution will eventually bring Christians together. And John chapter 17, where Christ said, Father, make them one as we are one. See, that prayer hasn't been answered yet. No, that's true. <laughs> but it will be. It's true. Yes. And it may be persecution that does it. I just have a couple of things. When it comes to the, like the border crisis and the immigration and things like that, I think that we have to be careful um, and research the, the facts behind the, the reports that we're hearing because a lot of the reports that we do hear about those things are slanted, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So if we're all over here and there's this and this and this from a slanted point of view, then we're going to accept it as true. And, but I, I think that we should stop, take a look at it and say, is this true or not? They're saying this, you know, before we get all excited about these other things. Um, I don't know, it's just, just something yeah. I feel like we should concentrate on because I, I know people who watch the news over and over and over and that's all they do and um, more than they get in the word. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they're pretty upset, they're fearful, you know, and, and, then, and then switching gears is when it comes to persecution, um, I think it's gonna show who is real and who isn't. Yeah. You know, a part of the divide, I think has even widened since the death of the late but great Billy Graham. Because no matter who was in that White House, right. he went in there to minister. He did. Yeah. He wasn't going in to be flamboyant right. and show that I, you right. know, I, I've got the ear, the eye of this president, that president, right. or whatever. Right. He went in to minister. And now that it's become so political and everybody's standing outside the White House throwing brick bats, right. Right. you know, because they're, they're supporting one party affiliation or the other. Where does the gospel come in? How do That's you get right. whoever's right. in that White House? I don't care if they be they Republican or Democrat. They need the Lord. Yes, right. they need the Lord. That's why the Lord tells us to pray for them. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So we we rather than right. rather than dividing ourselves up along party lines, why aren't we going into the White House, whether it's a Democrat or a Republican in there, to minister the truth of the gospel? When when one last thing I'll say. When Pilate had Jesus right before him, and he, he thought he had Jesus' life in his hand, so he thought, and, and Jesus said, well, my people follow me because they want the truth, and Pilate said, well, what is what truth? What is the truth? Is truth? Yeah. Well, he had the truth right in front of him, and he didn't even realize That's it. That's right. Mm -hmm. We've got to take the truth there in the Pilate. That's it. That's good. Yeah. Sure is quiet in here. Well, well <laughs> I, I, yeah, That's I mean, where, where are the, where are the, anointed men and women of God to put the finger in the face of the king and yes. say, thus saith the Lord. Or, yeah. You know, to put the finger in the, in, in the face of uh, opposition and say, no, this is the word of the Lord. Um, you know, at the same time, we can't just beat people over the head with scripture and there right. comes the right. love. And, and, but, but when it comes down to it, if we aren't consistent in yeah, those right. things, consistency. that's where it falls off. It's, it's interesting too. I think sometimes people get more offended if you make a comment against their political party than mm -hmm. they do sure. the name of Christ. Isn't yeah. that something? It's come to that, it, hasn't it's, it? It's almost like politics have become a person's idol where you right. get or, so or even their religion. enwrapped. Yeah, <laughs> it's like who's what's going on in Washington instead of, you know, preaching the good news, and listening to fake news or not knowing what the truth is, but we have the truth, like you said. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think right. that's where we need to get our, as the church, as Christians, we need to focus solely on Christ. As, as you said, Jesus said, my followers, they follow me because I'm truth. He, he is the truth, the way, and life. And so I think that's where we need to shift the church's understanding is it's not Democrat, Republican, Independent. It's Lord Jesus. Okay. Yeah. All right, let, let's turn our attention because I know another issue that you were all chomping at the bit to get at, and that is this <laughs> issue of marijuana. Mm -hmm. More and more states are legalizing marijuana for recreational use. And uh, they, I think there's even a move before Congress now to try to just make it nationwide. And amidst all of that, we see statistics that show us drug driving is becoming as big a problem as drunk driving. So yes. all of we're seeing the dangers of this. But there's all the tax revenue, of course, yeah. from the sale of marijuana, you right. know, and, and, and law enforcement just saying, well, we can't, we can't seem to bring it under control, so let's just legalize it and forget it. Right. Uh, what does God say about marijuana? 
and, I don't and know drops. That, <laughs> I don't know that the scriptures specifically deal with that one substance, mm -hmm. but certainly anything that causes us to be enslaved uh, physically, mentally, emotionally is not pleasing to God. And um, I grew up in an era where there's virtually a drug-free era. I, I'm one of the older ones here. And the police largely have, have come to the realization that we cannot possibly police everyone who uses marijuana recreationally. Mm -hmm. It just can't be done. And so the culture then, and, and of course, the, the courts take the position, well, let's tax it. And then again, back to what's legal is not necessarily moral. Mm. And my own wife has chronic pain issues. And we seriously considered the use of marijuana type products, getting her marijuana card. Medicinally, uh, yeah. We're not doing that at this point, but I would not hesitate to do it, uh, should we need to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. But we would not do that illegally. Right. We would not do it illegally. And so it's no secret, like you said about the driving, that for many people, the, the, the entrance door to other drugs is marijuana. It's the gateway. And uh, I'm talking, and a practical side of that, Bill, is I talk to a lot of employers who say they're having trouble finding good employees who have a good work ethic, <clears throat> will come to work on time, don't play video games all night, and can pass a drug test. Yeah. 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 See and that? And so that's a very practical side. God mm -hmm. doesn't want us to, to do that. Anything that is taking possession of your mind and you're losing control of yourself, right. your senses right. are like, there's something dangerous about that. I believe it is. Yeah. Some, yeah, something very dangerous about that. And if you think about the actual marijuana, though, there's, there's differences in the product. And there is the, the, the kind is the THT, right? THC. Right. And then there's the other kind, right? So, you know, you're looking at one of them is... Uh, to get you high, and the other one is for medicinal, and the, the, the effects, the side effects, mm -hmm. the effects of you are going to be a lot different. So we have to look at that too. But before, before it was legalized, then it, it's, you know, the Bible says to obey the laws of the land, so right. obviously it's a no. But now that it's legalized, does that mean it's okay for us to or not? Well, somebody said earlier that that which may be legal not may not necessarily be morally mm -hmm. right. 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 Yeah. So. You, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. okay. Well. Well, no. I, I, I was just, uh, you know, thinking that, you know, when it comes to the Bible, talks a lot about drinking. That was the thing that was most prevalent, and it achieves very similar the the same goal. Uh, you know, is to, um, you know, not really medicate, but uh, to to create that euphoric high. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so just like that, it can be abused. It can be, uh, um, and, and the Bible, you know, the word declares that we're not supposed to be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So um, to me, it's nothing more than just another world cheap substitute for what you can have in your yeah. relationship with Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's, that's final was, comments, we're just, just about out of time. The recreational side of it. Yeah, the recreational side. I was just going to, yeah, I was going to say that's, our society, our world has become what, what gives us pleasure, what can we escape in, and what can yeah. we go to? And mm -hmm. like you said, it, it's people need to understand the truth of who Jesus is, and that's where, again, as a church, as pastors, as Christians, we need to get relationship with people and that's talk right. with them and that's explain good, to them mm -hmm. the truth yeah. instead of just telling them. Well, gentlemen, we're all out of time. Thank you very much. We certainly you, appreciate Bill. all the Thank valuable, you. valuable input you've given us. And so hopefully our viewers will uh, be able to glean from this. So our program for today. We'll be back again, of course, next week. Be sure to send us your questions in the meantime so that we can have them on the next uh, Life's Questions. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a good day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 
100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.